Greetings coders. Um, today's video is going to be on uh, apparently how to do gravity. Um, apparently you guys are still having problems with how to make things drop and the second most popular topic seems to be how to shoot. So let's go ahead and go over that and um, maybe knock two birds with one stone. Okay, all right, so let's get started. Um, so let's make a simple game about how to jump. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and add uh, three things to my game uh, to kind of start out. All right, so let's turn off the insert here. Okay, so let's go ahead and make a player. Um, or let's choose our sprites first. Let's go to our animation tab and see what kind of stuff we could use to kind of make a quick game here. All right, so let's choose a quick character. Um, I'm not gonna be picky here. Let's see if I can smaller down my window. Uh, let's go with the uh, robot. Okay, let's go with the robot that faces to the right. So let's go kind of a uh, robot here. I'll just pick, um, I don't see anything looks aggressive here. Mm. Okay, mm, not yet, not yet, not yet. Uh, Sure, let's pick the little robot here. Okay, so here's my little robot. He's gonna be my main character. Let's go ahead and make an obstacle because um, obviously we we're gonna make a jumping game. Let's jump over obstacles. So uh, any obstacles uh, that I like here. Uh, I actually don't like any of these obstacles. Let's see if I can find anything else I like here. Not that it matters. Um, Uh, let's go into here. I think I like here. I like this minecart. Okay, so my guy's gonna jump over this minecart, um, and let's go ahead and take a projectile. So something that we can think like shooting. So let's see if we can find any tools here that we like. And uh, look, there's a couple bows and arrows here. Maybe just make the arrow our uh, our our thing here. So before we begin, I'm just going to use this crop button here to kind of crop everything so that it's nice and tight. So our hitboxes are, are clean. Okay. All right. So we have uh, three sprites. Let's go ahead and make some uh, some sprites now. So let's go ahead and make our player first. So player equals create sprite. And let's give it a location. Let's make it 100, uh, 300. Let's see, is that right? 100, 300? Yeah, that sounds good. And let's go ahead and set animation. So player.setAnimation. And by the way, all this code is going to be put on our uh, code for game features. So all these videos that I'm making, all the code is going to be eventually pasted onto this document for your use. Okay. All right. So uh, player.setAnimation. Let's go ahead and do our little robot here. And um, yeah, we can do other things later. Let's go ahead and make this for all three things. So let's go ahead and make copy and paste this. Copy and paste this. And now instead of player, let's go ahead and do obstacle. And let's go ahead and do obstacle. And let's make the obstacle. Uh, what was that thing that I wanted? I wanted the minecart. Okay. And let's go ahead and put the cart. Uh, I don't know. Let's make the cart kind of onto the right side here. So let's go like uh, 450 or something. And the cart's going to kind of like roll in. So let's go ahead and add a velocity right now. Obstacle dot velocity x. And miss, let's make it go to the left. So let's go like negative 5 or something. Right. And, um, and let's go ahead and create an arrow. So it's kind of like our bullet here for a lot of you guys who want to make shooting games. So let's go var arrow, change this to arrow, and we're going to actually change this to arrow one or something. Okay. And um, let's go ahead and just put it where the player is. Let's go ahead and run. Oh, yeah. I need to draw sprites. So make sure you guys have to draw sprites. And let's go ahead and test out, uh, you know, what we got so far. Okay. So we have, um, you know, a truck that's moving, but it's not resetting the background. Um, our player is too big. Our arrow is too big. So let's go ahead and do some of these things. Okay. 
So like I said before, that the three functions that every one of your games should have is something like draw background, okay, and something that controls player. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and implement those right now. Um, I'm just gonna copy and paste, uh, you know, our uh, from our code bank here for control player, something like that. I can always change it later. So I'm gonna copy and paste this. So basically, if you hit left, it goes left. If you hit right, it goes right. I don't think I want to do these for now, so I'm just gonna kind of delete this, um, or just leave it the way it is for now, um, because eventually up's gonna be like jump. And we're not going to even have a down key, so I'm just going to delete this later on, anyway. But um, let's go ahead and draw a background. So uh, function draw a background. I'm just going to make a simple background for now. I'm just going to just make it white or something. Uh, background white. I can make it. I can change it later to make it more fancy. But for now, let's just make it a white background. Okay, so now we have the ore truck going, and um, you know our characters need to scale down a little bit. So I'm gonna do player scale equal to 0 0.25. Okay, just to get things the right size here, let's make the arrow smaller as well. So arrow dot scale is equal to point uh, zero point I don't know one or something. <clears throat> okay, maybe that's too small. It's maybe 0.25. Okay, let's go ahead and maybe even rotate it. I think it's arrow dot rotation is equal to 45 degrees or something. So the arrows are kind of facing that way. Okay, and um, for now, let's go ahead and make the arrow invisible because uh, we don't want, I uh, will do it later, doesn't matter. All right, so we kind of got the basics, uh, you know, sprites and, and whatnot. Um, let's go ahead and implement jump, okay? Oh, before we do jump, uh, let's go ahead and make a ground, okay? So if you have a game that you want the player to be able to jump on top of, right? He needs to have gravity, and if he has gravity, he needs to be able to hit the ground. So I'm actually going to create a, a sprite that's called the ground. So some of you guys have ground as kind of like a, a background, but if you want the player to actually be able to collide with the ground, you need to create a sprite that's called the ground. And I'm not going to, like, add a, a, a set animation for it. I'm just going to make it a, a gray box. Um, so let's go ahead and make the ground uh, big. So let's go 200, 350 um, location. And let's make it, I don't know, really big. So let's make it like 800 or something by 100. So this should make us a gray box on the bottom here. And that means our players uh, um, will be here. Uh, let's see, what am I thinking? Uh, 800 is too big. Let's make um, let's make either our player go up or the ground go down. Um, let's go ahead and make our players go up a little bit. So let's go something like uh, 260 or something and make our, our player maybe 200. So he's kind of like somewhere in the middle. Okay. Uh, no player needs to go down a little bit more. Um, it doesn't matter. Actually, just put him up here so that you know when he eventually drops, uh, the arrow will drop. Um, actually, I want the arrow where the player is. So let's go 200 here. Okay. So anyway, um, we're don't worry about the arrow for now. We're, the arrow will be whatever. We just want to have the the player have the arrow for now, and the ground is on. It's right here and the player will be able to collide with it. So let's talk about collision real quickly. Uh, let's talk about gravity real quick, okay? So let's go ahead and make a function that applies gravity, okay? Because that's kind of like your question that you've been asking, how do I apply gravity? So let's make a function called apply gravity. And how gravity works is that whatever you want to apply gravity on, in this case, the player, you're going to set his velocity, y, in a counter pattern. So basically I do, basically the same thing. So player.velocity y is equal to player velocity y, except I'm gonna add one to it. Okay. So basically um, after the background is drawn, I'm gonna apply gravity. So I'm gonna use that function apply gravity. And now you're gonna see the player just kind of fall through the ground. Right? And he doesn't just like go down, right? So there's a difference between this 
in this. So let's say if I just delete this part right here, right? Just make it velocity one. He's going to like slowly go down, right? That isn't really gravity. Gravity needs to be inside a, a counter pattern. So basically when you first drop, um, the player uh, starts out slowly and then he accelerates as he keeps falling, right? Uh, velocity Y, sorry. So now he kind of just falls down. Okay, so that's how you apply gravity. Now, he doesn't collide with the ground because we never told it to collide with the ground. So let's go ahead and make another function that we're going to call. And we're going to call it something like um, uh, collision rules or something. Okay, so these are all the rules that uh, apply to collision. So basically any rules that we have for colliding, let's go and put it in here. So I want to make the player dot collide with the ground. So now the player should collide with the ground, oh, except I didn't call it. So after gravity gets applied, let's go ahead and apply collision rules. Or let's actually do this after, I guess, control player. So I'm going to control this, put this on top. Apply gravity and apply collision rules. Okay. So now the player, um, you know, collides with the ground. Let's go ahead and make the player also collide with the obstacle. Okay, so now uh, the I can actually get hit. Okay, uh, now let's see. I can actually move um, a little here. Um, but a gravity is getting applied to me. So you can see that I'm jumping, but I'm not really getting off the ground that much. Okay. So let's go ahead and make this an actual jump. So if the player hits the up key, you don't want to move the character up. You want to change his velocity because if you're going to be able to like kind of fight against uh, gravity, you're going to have to change the player's velocity. Okay. So I'm going to do player velocity Y to be, uh, in this case, jumping up is a negative number. So let's go like negative, I don't know, 10. Okay. Because now if your player can now jump over the cart. Okay. Okay. Um, now you can see that after I I, I, I get hit by the cart. Oh, let's get hit by the cart again. Um, once I get hit by the cart, I can jump over it, but I can't move forward anymore. You can see me kind of going to the left. And that's because of the way collision works. When something collides with the obstacle, it kind of loses all of its, uh, it gains the velocity of the object. So basically the obstacle had a velocity of negative five. The minute that the obstacle hits me, I will have a negative five and I can't delete it. So basically right here, when your player is getting hit by an obstacle that's going to the left, if you use, uh, uh, I'm sorry, if you, uh, use the key down key function or the key right function, you also want to change the velocity back to zero so the player can actually move. So we'll do player.velocity uh, x to be equal to zero, meaning that after you hit the right key, you no longer get collided with. So now I can jump and I can now keep on moving and keep on playing. Okay. So anyway, this is how I jump. You notice if I hit the up key, I can keep jumping forever and ever and ever. And that's sort of a problem, right? It's kind of like a rocket booster. I'm not really jumping. I'm sort of just flying more than I am jumping because I can continue to hit the up key and I can go up and down. Um, and I can keep holding up. So we've dealt with this problem before. And the thing is basically we only want to be able to jump if we're touching the ground. So how do we do that? We're going to do this by adding what we call a hitbox for the player's feet. Okay. So let's go ahead and make a hitbox for the player's feet. So I'm going to call it player feet box. Okay. And I'm going to create it. And let's go ahead and make it 100, 200, I don't know, 50 comma 5. And let's go ahead and um, uh, let's go ahead and uh, turn on debug and kind of see where it is. Um, so let's turn on player or player feet box. 
dot debug equals true. And just see where that thing is. Okay. So you kind of see it's kind of up here right now. Okay. So basically, um, I think the best place to put it is inside control player because this whole concept is kind of of making this feet box is that when he hits jump, he will um, only jump if he's touching the ground. So we're gonna create, uh, we're gonna give it in, give the value of the X and Y position of the player feet box, right? So player feet box dot X is gonna be equal to player dot X. So the box is gonna be wherever the player is. And the player feet box dot Y it's going to be equal to player dot y as well. So basically, this is going to follow the player. Okay. And I don't know what happened there. Let's go ahead and run again. Okay. So you can kind of see that this thing is kind of following me, but it's not exactly at my feet. So let's go ahead and um, move it down a little bit. So let's see. It looks like I need about, I don't know, 40 pixels. So hit reset, hit run. So now this thing's actually at my feet, okay, which is perfect. Because now, instead of saying, hey, I can jump anytime I want, like a double jump in the air, I can only jump if uh, my feet are on the ground. So basically right here, instead of saying uh, up, if the player hits the up key, we're going to say if the player hits the up key and my feet are touching the ground. So player dot uh player feet box is touching the ground so this now will only let me jump if my feet are touching the ground okay um although my jump is not very high what happened there okay well maybe uh negative 10 is not enough so let's go to negative uh i don't know let's go negative 20 because now that's apparently that we're only able to jump once, we're going to need a bigger jump. So maybe go 15 and hit run. Let's see if I can jump over the box. All right? Yep. So 15 is kind of perfect. Okay. And now I don't. Now that I know my feet box is working, I don't need to have it visible anymore. So let's go ahead and turn or delete this line of code. Or just comment it out. It doesn't really matter. We don't need it for now. Oh yeah, and it's plus it's a it, you can actually still see it. So let's go ahead and turn off the visibility of it. Player dot feet box um, visible equals false. And now you don't even see it anymore. And now I can't double jump. You can see I'm hitting double jump and it's not really working. I can only jump if I'm on the ground. Okay. All right. So that fixes our problem of jumping and gravity um, all in one shot. So the other question that you guys are asking is, hey, Mr. Wynn, what if I want to be able to shoot something and have it um, hit, uh, you know, um, the target? Okay, so we have this arrow here, um, and it should kind of follow everywhere we go, but I'm not going to even care about that because I'm not going to even make it visible to the player. Okay, um, but basically... Let's go ahead and add a button since we're not using the down key anymore. Let's go ahead and use this for spacebar. So I think it's, um, if I'm correctly, space. Yep. So when the player hits the spacebar, we're going to shoot the arrow. So we're going to call it, a, make a function called fire arrow. Okay. And let's go ahead and implement this function because obviously we don't have this thing written yet. Let's go ahead and write it. So, um, so let's go ahead and write it, you know, a little bit down here. So what does fire arrow look like? Okay, so let's go ahead and make this function fire arrow. So firing an arrow means that um, you want to get you know, you want to make the arrow wherever the player is, and we want to kind of shoot it. Okay, so let's go ahead and kind of do some of this code. So first things first, let's make the arrow kind of follow the player. Okay, so player uh, dot x. Okay, then arrow dot y is equal to player dot y. Okay, and you want to have the arrow to kind of be able to move. So let's make the arrow go. I don't know to the right because we're going to maybe shoot the cart. 
Okay, let's make the cart, I don't know, like plus five or something, or equal to five, sorry. And kind of see where we're at. So now we have this arrow, and if I hit the space bar, the arrow shoots, okay? So basically when I hit the space bar, it's gonna teleport to me and it's gonna fire, okay? So let's go ahead and make the arrow. Do I need to make the arrow any faster? Um, yeah, let's make the arrow like 10 or something. And, uh, and let's go ahead and make the arrow when the first starts out invisible so you don't see it. So let's turn up here when we created the arrow. Let's make the arrow start out as invisible, okay? But when you fire the arrow, we're going to make the arrow visible. So we're going to make the uh, visible here equal to true. So only when you fire the arrow um, does it fire. Okay. And now you can see that I can actually hit spacebar over and over again, and it keeps resetting the arrow, kind of, it's kind of refiring the arrow before it actually gets there. So that's kind of a problem because there's no cooldown. Apparently I can just hold down the space bar and the arrow never really leaves my body because I keep kind of bringing the arrow back to me, right? So that's kind of a problem. So how do we fix that? Well, the way we fix that is kind of like how we did the hitbox thing, the, the jumping thing. We don't want to jump until the arrow is ready to be fired, okay? So let's just say something like, uh, let's call it um, arrow ready. So right here where we created the arrow and we made all of these values, we set the animation, we made it smaller, we rotate it, we made it invisible. Let's make another variable just for arrow. We're going to say arrow ready. Okay. So this is kind of like a Boolean value that says, hey, the arrow is ready to shoot. So in here, when we use the space bar, we're going to kind of do the same thing we did with the player feet box. We're going to say, hey, uh, if the player hits space, and the arrow is ready, right, which is a true value, then allow the player to fire the arrow. So now, nothing really changes because I never told it to go false. So what I'm going to do is say, well, when do I want the arrow to be not ready? Like, he can't be fired anymore. Well, basically, as soon as the player shoots the arrow, we want the arrow to not be ready yet. So we're going to basically say when someone shoots an arrow, it will not be allowed to be fired again. So right now I'm hitting space and I can't shoot the arrow because the arrow, after I fire the first time, the arrow ready is false. I can't shoot it more than once. Okay. Well, Mr. Wynn, that fixes the problem not letting us shoot too many arrows, but now we have a different problem. We can't shoot more than one arrow at all. So the question is, what do you want to happen, um, you know, to be able to make the, the arrow ready again. And it's basically two scenarios. When the arrow hits the cart, we want the arrow to be ready again. And if, if the arrow flies off the edge of the map, we want it to be able to fire it again. So let's go ahead and make those two functions, okay? So we have two things about fire arrow. Um, we want uh, arrow reset. So let's make a function called arrow reset. And actually, I don't even think we need arrow reset because the arrow once it's ready to fire we can fire from our body so we need to actually make a fire arrow reset so let's say uh arrow um uh arrow hit obstacle okay so basically if the arrow hits the obstacle we're going to uh reset the arrow so what do we want to do? Um, let's go uh, if, if arrow is touching the obstacle, we want it to do a few things. We want the um, arrow to uh, mm, do we want the arrow to be invisible? Let's see, what do we want to do? Let's think about this real quickly. We want the arrow to reset. Yeah, let's make the arrow reset. So let's actually make the arrow reset. We'll make a function called arrow reset. So let's go ahead and reset the arrow. 
and let's go ahead and reset the optical too and we'll we'll write these functions later so we'll re so basically if the arrow touches the obstacle we want the arrow to reset we want the obstacle to reset and we want the arrow to be ready to fire again so we're going to be arrow equals true something like that um obviously it's not going to do anything because arrow reset isn't written obstacle isn't written but let's go ahead and figure this out so let's go ahead and make these two new functions that we just created so what what does arrow reset mean so arrow reset is just another function that resets the arrow right so let's go ahead and reposition the arrow so we're going to make put the arrow back onto the player so we'll do something like player or arrow.x and arrow.y is equal to player.y and up here, ah, up here is equal to player dot x semicolon semicolon, and let's make the arrow not move anymore because the arrow is kind of moving right now. So let's go ahead and change its velocity down to uh, to false. Oh, sorry, not false. Uh, to zero, and I guess uh, resetting arrow makes it ready, so it makes sense to put the code here. So if the uh, arrow touches the player, we're going to reset the arrow, reset the obstacle, and now the arrow is ready to fire again. So now i got to figure out what, how obstacle reset works. So let's go ahead and write that in a control copy there. So basically, let's see. So the cart kind of um, what happens when we want the obstacle to reset. So the obstacle reset means we want to put it back to where it started. So let's go ahead and look at our obstacle here and that's it so it's obstacle it resets to that location so let's go ahead and kind of paste that somewhere here so basically the x value of the obstacle dot x is equal to 450 and the obstacle dot y value is equal to 260. so now we have something that resets the obstacle so now if i shoot it oh that didn't work hmm. what happened uh, oh yeah, I never called the function arrow hit obstacle. So let's go ahead and put in uh, inside here arrow hit obstacle. So now if our arrow hits the obstacle, it resets the obstacle. So this is what you guys want to do if you guys want to create um, uh, the game and uh, oh reset the arrow resets to the player's current location mm, let's see so basically we have an arrow that's kind of like showing up where we don't want it to um, okay so uh, let's see uh, we made the arrow ready we changed the location to player um, let's go ahead and make the arrow invisible. So when we fire the arrow, it makes the arrow visible. When we reset the arrow, let's make the arrow not visible. So arrow.visible equals false. So it basically doesn't collide with anybody. Oh, actually, it's going to be wherever the player is. Hmm. This might cause a few bugs. Um, because even though it's not visible, it means it can still get hit. So let's see. So let's see if I jump over this. And the, yep, the cart disappears. So if I hit the cart and I jump over it, it still disappears because the arrow is still there. So let's not put the arrow uh, uh, over here. Let's just put the arrow like somewhere and like like that it won't touch anything. Um, so let's go to like negative 100, negative 100 or something. Okay. So it basically says, Hey, the arrow is not visible to anyone. It's kind of just out there. Um, and so now if I jump over the cart, the cart should be able to go to the wall. Okay. So now we got a couple of things we want to fix. The cart doesn't reset when it hits the edge of the, the wall. And let's say I shoot my arrow and it, it, it doesn't hit anything. 
I can't shoot again because the arrow just kind of goes off to infinity. So let's go ahead and inside our collision rules, let's, let's kind of add two rules to what happens to our arrows. So if arrow dot uh, x is, let's say, greater than, I don't know, 420, um, let's go ahead and reset the arrow. So arrow dot uh, reset, or reset, we already created the function. And if the cart, the obstacle, dot x value is less than, let's say, negative 20, and it's like it's a big cart so let's say negative 50 reset the cart so we kind of wrote these rules already to kind of reset so we're just going to use the same thing again okay and did i spell it right it looks like i spelled it wrong obstacle reset I forgot the e here so now um i can kind of shoot the cart and jump over it if the cart goes to the end it refreshes back um, even if my arrow misses, I can shoot my arrow again, right? And that kind of uh, kind of finishes our tutorial. Now, if you want to make, um, let's for example, multiple arrows, for example, um, then you just got to create the whole thing again, but except you're creating for two arrows, arrow one and arrow two. So if you, let's say, um, you know, your arrow is uh, still in mid-air, but you want to fire your second arrow, you can do that. Or if you really just want to make it easy on yourself, not even have to make an arrow, just make your arrow really fast. So if you do your arrow like 20, it's almost like you can fire your arrow like indefinitely, right? So now I can kind of shoot carts. Um, I can jump over carts and it can like respawn back. I can fire it. And whatnot. And yeah, you can even add like you know health to your cart. Like make make sure the cart gets hit by three times. And if the cart's you know a health goes down to zero, then destroy it or something. But yeah, this is you know a simple game. But this is kind of can be helpful for you to make your own game. Um, and that ends our video.